Hi. If you recall, I did a teardown of this SA-2N V2 Nano VNA a couple of videos back. I meant to do some preliminary testing in that video as well, but there was some mix-up during shipping, and the unit I received had two of these 50 ohm load connectors, but I did not have a short connector required for the calibration procedure, so I did not do any testing. Now I finally received the proper short connector and we can go ahead and check out this unit. Also, while I was waiting for the short connector to arrive, I managed to convert one of the 50 ohm load connector into a short connector by cutting out a piece of uh, copper and drilled a hole in the middle and then pushed the piece all the way through as you can see here. So the center pin and the outer shell are connected via this piece of copper. Unfortunately, after I used it a couple of times, half of the copper piece had fallen out, but the center pin is still connected. And uh, let's just buzz it out right here so that we can see. So you can see that. This is indeed a short connector. So this is a rather crude short connector, and I'm curious to see how it compares to the proper short calibration connector that I just received. By the way, this SAA-2N V2 Nano VNA is currently on sale on Banggood. I have included a coupon code in the video description below, and I think it will save you approximately $15 if you follow the link down below and apply the coupon. Anyway, in today's measurement, we're going to use the 4x4 MIMO panel antenna I received from Waveform a while ago. I measured that antenna using a Nano VNA-FV2 and a Light VNA before already. I will put the links to these two videos down below as well, in case you haven't watched them already. Now let me power on the SAA and we will see how the results matches up with my previous measurements with the other two Nano VNAs. I usually skip the calibration procedures on camera, but uh, this one uses N connectors, which is rather unwieldy, so I will actually do it on camera just to show you the process. So this is the one I already calibrated, but for our purpose, let's uh, do the calibration, let's reset all. And we can start from scratch. For our antenna measurement, the first two bands are from 600 megahertz to 960 megahertz. So I think what I'm going to do is set the frequency range to between 500 megahertz and 1.1 gigahertz. So let's do that. Let's uh, calibrate. And actually, let's first set the frequency range. Let's uh, do a stimulus start. Let's do 500 megahertz. And uh, let's do stop frequency of 1.1 gigahertz. So that is our frequency band that we wanted to measure. And uh, later on, we will set another frequency band to measure the 1710 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz frequency band of the antenna. But uh, for this calibration, let's uh, concentrate on this frequency band. I realize there's a little bit of glare on the screen. Unfortunately, this angle is very tricky and uh, I probably will have to lift it up a little bit. Hopefully you can see it clearly. Now I have already set up the range between 500 megahertz to 1.1 gigahertz. Now we'll start the calibration procedure. And let's see, calibrate. Now we of course have to put an open connector on. So for that, I'm going to screw on the open connector. Just hand tight will be fine. So let's uh, press that to open. And you notice that it does take a couple seconds for the calibration to complete. And that's what I mentioned earlier, that this one is a little bit of uh, slow on the speed side. So the next calibration is going to be the short connector. And now we put on a proper short connector. You can see here. Okay, let's press short. And a short calibration is done. Let me now move on to the load to put on a 50 ohm connector here. So this is the 50 ohm, you just can see load. And 
And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to put the connector on properly. And this is the load connector. We will do load calibration. Finally is the through calibration, and that is needed if you are measuring S21, which we will be doing, so we have to calibrate that through. If you are just measuring S11, you can stop right here. That should be fine. Now, for the through connection, we have to use these uh, stock cables. Now, this is a little bit of, uh, unwieldy, as I mentioned earlier, so we will put these uh, cables on first. So this is one side. And uh, this is the other side of the cable. And also we will put on a through. We want to make sure that everything is tight so that uh, our calibration is uh, accurate here. After I put it on, I'm going to press through, and it will do its calibration. When it's done, we will uh, take it out, and uh, we will we'll say done. We will save it to zero, so that is our calibration here. So let me remove these cables. We can see our calibration results. Now before moving any further, I wanted to see how well the short connector that I made, the makeshift one, with this piece of copper compared to the out-of-the-box proper short connector here. So let's uh, put that short connector on. This is the proper one. Let's just see uh, after the calibration where that is at. So I fully expect you can see that this one, let's see, actually let's turn off some of the traces here that is uh, not necessary. So let's go back. Let's go display, let's go traces. We will turn off the three and that will make it cleaner. So now let's uh, concentrate on this two. You can see that after we put on the short connector, this uh, marker one is indeed staying on the proper position, which is uh, no surprising because that's where we calibrated that. So just for curiosity, I'm going to remove this and uh, put on the makeshift short connector that we made earlier to see where that cursor lands. So this is the short connector we made. And let's put it on. So as you can see, actually that is not bad at all. So which means that uh, the short connector we made actually serves the purpose just as well from 500 megahertz to 1.1 gigahertz at least in this frequency range. It behaves exactly like the proper short connector that we used. So that's good to know. So for our antenna measurement, I'm going to turn off the Smith chart so that we don't clutter the view here. So that Smith chart needs to go away. And we're only showing the log mag of the S11 return and also the S21. Now I have hooked up two of the four channels. By the way, a little bit of background on this antenna. This antenna covers between 600 megahertz all the way up to 6 gigahertz. Since the SAA only measures up to 3 gigahertz, we will not be able to measure the last frequency band, which is uh, 3,300 megahertz all the way to 6 gigahertz. We're only going to concentrate on the lower frequency band. Now we're setting at 500 megahertz to 1.1 gigahertz range, which we're measuring the first two frequency bands, which covers between 600 megahertz and 960 megahertz. And also I have adjusted the plot to show the SWR plot rather than the log mag plot. So you can see that uh, this is the response of the antenna. The yellow line shows the frequency response of the S11, which essentially shows the SWR of the antenna within the frequency range. As you can see that for the majority of the time, we are actually under 2.5, which is the specified frequency range that uh, this antenna is operating under. 
So this is no problem at all. Now I do notice that uh, I, for some reason, cannot find where to turn on the marker on the on-screen display here. And that might just be this firmware where I'm just not familiar with, but uh, that is a little bit of uh, annoying here. But nevertheless, you can read that SWR from the numbers here. So this is no problem at all. So this indeed shows that this antenna within this frequency range is actually within the spec. The cyan line here is showing you the channel isolation here. And as you can see, we are within 10, 15 decibels. And that is indeed similar to what we observed in the other measurements that we did with the other two nano VNAs. And here is our sweep between 1.5 gigahertz and 3 gigahertz. As you can see that the yellow line, which is our SWR, is staying nicely under 1.5. It's definitely within the spec of under 2. So that's very nice to see that very flat frequency response. And again, the sign line shows you the cross-channel leakage, which is uh, definitely not desired. And we can see that the cross-channel interference is at actually very good number, which is minus 30 dB for the majority of the time here. So as frequency increases, the cross-channel interference started dropping, which is exactly what we saw in the other measurements that we have done with the other two nano VNAs. So as we can see here, the results from this nano VNA matches the results from the other two nano VNAs very, very well. So among the three nano VNAs I have got so far, I actually like them all. The nano VNA-FV2 is very polished and the firmware is very easy to use. The light VNA uses Dislord firmware and is very feature rich. Also, it measures up to 6.3 GHz and is pretty much the only VNA on the market you can buy with this frequency range for under $100. And the one we reviewed today, the SAA-2N, of course, has its own strength. If you don't need the N connectors and wanted to go with the more traditional SMA connectors, you can purchase the Dash 2 instead of the Dash 2N versions instead. But I find it very handy to have a Nano VNA with dedicated N connectors. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I will catch up with you next time.